I'm Rob Skinner, and this is the Rob Skinner Podcast. This episode is the second of a three-part series called Go Get It. I'm going to be talking about how to make 2022 your best year so far spiritually. I know that if you're listening to this podcast, that you are a grower. You're hungry to make this life count and to do whatever it takes to grow spiritually and make a difference for God. I want to share with you three things that will help you make 2022 your best year so far. Last time I talked about Get Happy. Today, the second episode in this series is Get Help. All this and more on the Rob Skinner Podcast. Welcome back to the Rob Skinner Podcast. My goal is to inspire you to live a no regrets life, make this life count, and multiply disciples, leaders, and churches. I hope that since the last episode that you have taken time to delight yourself in God, to take your relationship with God deeper, to learn how to acclaim Him, and that you're enjoying the pleasure of being close to God. Today I want to talk about the the topic, Get Help. In Revelation 3, verse 17, Jesus said, You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. The church in Laodicea couldn't see what their real problem was. They weren't self-aware. They were probably sincere, but they were blind to how Jesus actually viewed them. I read that a common household fly has a thousand eyes. It has so many lenses, it can see in almost 360 degrees. However, it'll fly into a window until it dies. If you've ever watched it, it just keeps on buzzing around, trying to get through that window. It has a thousand eyes, but it can't see what's right in front of it. This past year, I knew there was something I wasn't seeing in my church, in my life. I wasn't happy with the progress of my church. Now, of course, COVID was a part of that, but I knew there were other things beneath the surface that were preventing the kind of health and growth I was praying for. I knew there was something, but I just couldn't see it. And that's when I asked the elder, Dr. Al Baird, to come and visit for two months. And I interviewed him recently, and hopefully you listened to that episode. I asked him to look under the hood of the church. I asked him to help me to see what I could not see. And he came and revealed a lot. There were communication problems in the church. People were not getting information in a timely way. There were leadership structure problems in the church. There was dissatisfaction from some members. There were unresolved issues with some people. Some people were not feeling heard. There was gossip among the members. And he found quite a few things that needed work in our church. And so I started making changes. We restructured the leadership. I assigned more responsibility to others. I worked at being a better listener. I worked toward patching up broken relationships. I've written letters to different people. I've met with people along with Al. We had to warn uh, divisive members, and I narrowed my focus to what I was best at. Now, the challenges of that is it was really, it put me in a very vulnerable situation to have someone of Al's caliber experience. I mean, he's he's one of the 30 would-be disciples in the Gempel's living room. I mean, back in 1979, this guy, he's literally seen it all in terms of spiritual Um, experience. And so to have him rummaging around in my attic, turning up things, going through all my, my business in the church, it was a very vulnerable feeling. I mean, I just thought, wow, 
you know, there were times I felt like, am I losing control here? What's, what's really happening? And it was a real test to my pride and my humility. And there were, there were times, quite honestly, that I thought, oh man, what did I get myself into? Why, why did I have Al come down? Because before it got better, it got really murky. It got really messy. I mean, there was just a lot of stuff going on all at once. And people were looking around, talking about it, going, what in the world's happening around here? It was just a huge, huge dust cloud in Tucson. Now, the positives that came out of it is all of a sudden, people started to share responsibility. Responsibility. I felt a lot less pressure and feel a lot less pressure. We've got hope that things are improving. There have been help in relationship challenges, issues and unresolved issues. They got settled. And there were, there were people that were, you know, just needed, needed some <laughs> discipline, to be honest. Now, here's the challenge for, for you. You need help to be the best leader you can be. Now, maybe you're not a church leader right now. Maybe you're leading a small group or you're leading Bible talk or, or whatever. But there are most likely things in your life and in your church or your ministry that you are not seeing right now. There might be unresolved relational issues that you need help fixing. You, you know it because you run into people and you go, no, that person doesn't like me. They've, they, I can sense through their body language they've got issues toward me. There might be structural issues that you need help from others to solve. Now, you're probably leading the ministry or responsibility you have because someone realized you're the most talented and spiritual person for that particular job. But if you want your ministry to get to the next level, you need help. Because we all run into times where we think we're seeing it, we think we understand things, but it doesn't explain why aren't things doing better. And when I talk to ministry leaders, and I talk to quite a few through the podcast and just through my normal relationship of friends, there are a lot of people wrestling with what in the world is going on and what do I need to work on? So let me give you some practicals. First of all, reach out for input. This is the toughest decision you'll make. This last summer, coming off of vacation, I, I just thought and prayed during vacation. And I came back thinking, I really need to get someone in my life. I really need someone to come and visit Tucson and take a look at this church because I know there's COVID, I know that's impacting it negatively, but there's other stuff too. The toughest decision was like when I sat down with Al and just said, hey, Al, I'd really like you to come down for a couple months and take a look at the church. And I would guess that you're probably of two minds. Part of you is like, man, that would really help my ministry if I could get someone to take a look at it. And there's probably a part of you is like, but what's he going to find? And what's he going to see about not only what's going on in the ministry, but also what's going on in my life. And so it can be really scary. What else can you do besides reach out? Try to get a mature brother or sister to walk with you for an extended period. It's really worth the expense. Sometimes we have people come and visit our church for, or our ministry for a day, an hour, or a few days, which is awesome. But that person will only get your side of the situation. They'll only typically hear what you're telling them. But if you can get someone to walk with you for a longer period of time, like a week, two weeks, I mean, for Al, it was two months. He met with over 60 people in my church. I mean, he really got a great sample of what's actually happening in the ministry. It's totally worth the expense. I mean, we set him up in, in a, a small house and it was just awesome. I mean, it's just so worth it because he had a thorough walkthrough of the church and the ministry. And, and that's that's the value in having a good spiritual audit. What else? Get help resolving troubled relationships. There were a couple situations in the church that I was just stymied. I mean, I was just really stymied where people were really going after me and I needed some help. And having someone else on the outside with authority come in and step in really made a huge difference. And you might be in a situation where you're leading a ministry where you are stuck because you know there are some people that 
they either don't like you, they're critical of you, they there might be selfish ambition, there might be just hatred. I don't, I don't know. But oftentimes that situation will just fester and it will create division if you don't get help dealing with it. Next practical, don't try to hide your weaknesses. No one is perfect. This is why we don't get help is because we know, we know, although we don't share it, that there are some things that really need to change about us. We might have sin in our life. We might have weaknesses. And here's the thing. Don't hide your weaknesses. Man, get some help. I mean, the strongest people in the world, we all have weaknesses. We can all get better. Just, just admit it. I mean, that's why we're saved by Jesus' grace, because we, we at some point realize, hey, I am not perfect. I'm a total sinner. So don't, don't try to keep putting up that front. Instead, just say, hey, Here's what I see, but there might be more. You know, please give me some help. What else can you do? Get into a mastermind group with similar type people. What I'm doing this year, which is really exciting, is I've, I've formed a small group with people who lead churches be, right in the, between 100 and 150. And we call it a mastermind group. That type, That goes back to a book written by, what's his name? my gosh, Napoleon Hill. He wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich. Now, this was a book on um, kind of, you know, whatever you believe you can achieve, and it's about accumulating money. But one of the, the really cool things that comes out of the book is he says, you need a mastermind group to brainstorm for ideas to help you to achieve the goals that you want. That when people gather together, that there's a synergy there's something that comes out that's greater than the sum of all the individual parts. And so I've adopted that. And so we've got a group with Joel Nagel, who leads a church in Lansing, Michigan. Chris Schwarzenberger, who leads a church in Spokane, Washington. Ben Borland, who leads a church in Oklahoma City. And then Josh Peterson, who leads a church in Albuquerque. And now there's a lot of different people that I would love to, to have join that group. But the only reason I chose these people is their church size is almost exactly the same size as my church size, which is right around 125 or, you know, in that, in that range. And so we've been meeting together to encourage each other and just to be able to let down our hair. And the first thing we did was he said, Hey, and then Joel Nagel helped facilitate this. He said, okay, share the good things that have happened this past year and share the bad stuff. And we shared, we just shared and all the stuff came out and it was very, vulnerable sharing, but it was so bonding. And we shared pictures from our families and who we are and what we're wrestling with. And it was awesome. And our goal together is help one another get to 200 disciples and beyond just to get growing and not be stuck at a, at a particular size band. And so I'm really excited about that because this is another way to get people into my life who can help me. And people who understand exactly what I'm going through. So you could find a group of three or four people, a mastermind group with, let's say, you know, small group leaders or people that are growing in, in maybe you lead a church of 40 or 60. But all you got to do is make the time. And we just meet every other week for about an hour. And it's, it's so worth it. Now, if you're not a church leader, you can still get help on a personal level. And I would call you to do that. I ask you to do it because there's a lot of stuff that's going on and I see so much drifting spiritually. And one of the best things that you can do to anchor yourself, to rebuild a foundation that's solid, is to get help on a personal level. One of the, the, the best things that came out of having Al come into my church is, is this. It was really messy during his time here. I, I got to be honest, there was just a lot of like, oh my gosh, lots of stirring up drama. But when the dust settled and we were able to deal with situations in the church, it was a great sense of peace of mind on my part because I'd passed the test. There were things I needed to repent on and I'm still working on, which is great. But 
someone had got, come into my life and into my ministry, taken a look at it top to bottom, called me to make changes that I needed to, but at the end of it, I, I'm stronger than ever. And that's a great feeling, knowing that, hey, people know me. I am a known person, but I'm stronger than ever now. And I feel more confident because I know that there are no skeletons in the closet at this point. And that's a great feeling going forward. Knowing, hey, listen, as far as other people can see and as far as I can see, we have a clear path to move forward. And I'm really excited about the changes. I mean, my discipling of others has been so much more consistent this year. Our structure is so much more solid. We're really working on communication. I mean, there is a an increase. For example, this last January, we hit like a bottom, like a real bottom during Omicron. We had 86 people at church. Now, prior to COVID, we had between 180 and 200 at, at church on Sundays. So to have 86 people, including kids, that was like, oh my gosh. I mean, you could have shot a cannon through our midweek or our church service on Sunday. It was so lightly attended. But the spirit is changing. There's a, a new spirit at work. And it's really exciting because after that, we had like 90, 125, and then we had 141, 141 people. So that's not the end all, but it's so exciting to see progress. And I really believe it's because I made the decision to get help. And I want to ask you to get help and go get it in 2022. Thank you so much for joining the Rob Skinner podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast, please hit the subscribe button and let your friends know about it and how to find it. Because my goal is to inspire you to make this life count, live a no regrets life, and multiply disciples, leaders, and churches. Have a great day and make this life count.